Hello, it's Ron with Ideal. Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly test a GFCI device in a live circuit using Ideal's SureTest Circuit Analyzer. And if you'd like to know more about the SureTest Circuit Analyzer, it's our catalog number 61-164. So please contact our customer service department or look at our website to find a distributor nearby you that actually stocks the circuit analyzers. Now to use them, simply plug the circuit analyzer into a live outlet using the one-foot extension cord provided with the tester, or you can purchase separately an extension cord with alligator clips on it so you can attach it to just bare conductors. Now, to test a GFCA device, the tester is going to create an imbalance between the hot and neutral conductors by leaking a small amount of current from the hot to ground using a fixed value resistor. Now, the test current applied by the sure test should not be less than 6 milliamps or greater than 9 milliamps. And the functional GFCI should sense that imbalance and disconnect the power. Now the tester is going to display the actual test current in milliamps and the trip time in milliseconds for you. And to very simply conduct a GFCI test, press the GFCI button to enter that GFCI main menu. The GFCI symbol in the display should be highlighted as the default test. Then simply press the GFCI button once to actually activate the actual test itself. Now the actual current being leaked to ground is displayed and the test icon and hourglass symbol appear on the display to let a user know that the test is actually being performed. Now the GFCI device should trip within the UL established guidelines causing the display to blank out with that loss of power. Now when the GFCI de device is reset, the unit's going to display the actual trip time that the GFCI took to respond to that current imbalance and then to actually open the circuit. And by pressing a down arrow button once returns the tester to its wiring verification mode. Now, if the GFCA device fails to trip, the tester is going to terminate the tester after six and a half seconds, which is actually displayed as 6,500 milliseconds. And then further inspection should determine whether the GFCI device circuitry is faulty, uh, the device is installed incorrectly, or maybe there is no GFCI device actually on that circuit. Now, note to test a GFCI device in a two-wire system where there is no ground. We're going to ask you to use the Ideal 61-175 ground continuity adapter. Now, you're going to connect the alligator clip on the adapter to a ground source, which could be, you know, structural steel in a building, a metal gas pipe, or again, a metal water pipe. Now, also, all appliances or equipment on that circuit being tested should be unplugged to help avoid any erroneous readings that might actually happen. Now, in addition to performing a GFCI test for evaluating personal shock protection from shock hazards, the tester can conduct testing to ensure equipment protection from ground faults that exceed 30 milliamps. Now the method of operation is really about the same as the GFCI test that we noted earlier, uh, but uses a different resistor uh, to create a 30 milliamp leakage current from hot to ground. Now to conduct that equipment protection test, press the GFCI button once to enter that GFCI main menu. Then press the right arrow button to highlight the EPD symbol. Then you're going to press the GFCI button one more time to actually activate that test. Now, again, the actual current being leaked to ground is displayed. Uh, the test icon and hourglass symbol are going to appear on the display to let you know, the, you know that the test is actually being performed. And if the equipment protection device uh, should trip, causing the display to blank out with the loss of power. Now, when the equipment protection device is reset and power is restored, the unit's going to display the actual trip time the device took to respond to that current imbalance and then actually open the circuit for you. Now again, if the equipment protection device fails to trip, the tester is going to terminate that test after six and a half seconds. And then further inspection should determine whether that equipment protection device is faulty, uh, maybe it's installed pro properly, or again, is that there is actually any circuit protection on, on that actual circuit itself. Now to learn more about Ideal Sure Test Circuit Analyzer and how it can actually help you discover wiring problems in a building, again, contact our customer service department or visit our website. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. I'm Ron with Ideal, and I will see you on the next one.